When some innovative caveman invented the bow and arrow, it was a huge breakthrough. The discovery turned the Homo sapien into an efficient hunter-gatherer. These days, archery has made a comeback in the hunting community, and it's even been reclassified as an Olympic sport. So you could say, the caveman's invention is still right on the mark. Today's bows are definitely not primitive devices. Crafted with calculated precision, they make it easier for you to take your best shot, and the caveman would have been very impressed. To make a long bow, a craftsman cuts six strips of cherry wood a little more than half a centimeter thick using a bandsaw. Then with a belt sander, he repeatedly thins the wood strips on both sides, tapering the ends a little each time. The tapering gives the wood some flexibility, which the bow will need to launch arrows into the air. With his bandsaw, he now carves a handle from a piece of wood. Next, he brushes super adhesive glue onto fiberglass strips and the tapered strips of cherry wood. He works swiftly because the glue will start to dry in less than an hour. Now he layers the strips. The fiberglass strips buttress the six glued wood strips on either end. This process is called lamination. Next, he glues the wood handle to the fiberglass and wood lamination. And he tops it with a piece of masking tape to protect it from scratches and glue smudges during the next steps. Now the laminates get the squeeze. He places them on a curved plywood shape called a bow form. He positions a steel heat strip, a rubber hose, and another plywood form on top of the laminates. He clamps it all together then inflates the rubber hose with an air compressor. The pressure from the hose combined with the heat from the metal strip mold the wood to the bow shape as the glue sets. One hour later, he removes the laminates, nicely pressed and glued into more bow-like curves. Now he draws the bow form onto the newly curved lamination following a template made of fiberglass. With his bandsaw, he cuts the wood along the lines he's just drawn. He cuts an arrow shelf. That's the notch for the arrow to rest as the archer aims. Then he trims the handle, making it a little wider at the center for comfort. Next, using a coarse toothed file, he hollows out little grooves in the upper and lower limbs of the bow. They're called string knocks, and the string will loop around them. To strengthen the tips, he glues little pieces of fiberglass and moose horn over them and the freshly filed knocks. He clamps it in a vice grip to set. When it's dry, he files through the horn and fiberglass to bring back the knock groove. He smooths it with sandpaper. Now he glues another piece of wood over the handle to improve the look and feel of it. He clamps it together while the glue dries, and three hours later, he sands it. Next, he wraps the handle in a piece of leather and stitches it together with nylon thread called artificial sinew. Many years ago, they used the tendons of an animal for thread. The leather will make the bow easier to grip. With a gel pen, he writes a serial number on the back of the bow, along with the draw weight. This bow will hold about 20 kilograms of pressure in check when it's drawn. This is a Flemish string jig, a wood fixture with posts on it. He loops nylon string around the posts. This is how he measures the string. It's always four inches shorter than the bow. He cuts it with a utility knife, then rolls wax onto it to make it easier to work with. He measures some string. Then he twists 16 strands of nylon, eight black and eight white, into a braid with loops on the ends. He hooks the string on the knocks, and it's time for target practice. As he bends the bow, energy is stored. He releases it, and the energy propels the pointed projectile. That apple didn't have a chance.